In this video I'm going to model a, a Minotaur character using box modeling. This is the reference that I'm going to use and with box modeling what I tend to do is just use um, either a photograph or an image or a drawing or a concept uh, like this one is and have copies of this off screen uh, on another monitor or just on a piece of paper and because of the, the the nature of box modeling is that you uh, look at the reference and um, almost freeform the the, the shapes uh, at, into a silhouette first of all, then refine them and refine the detail and and keeping the silhouette add the detail to specific areas. So using this character, um, which is a minotaur, we're going to model um, the core of the body uh, from a primitive which will be uh, a torso, two arms, two legs and a head with horns. We won't be modeling the hair as that be would be added later uh, or the beard um, and we'll do the the uh, spear and the um, loincloth later um, at the end of the, the video section. section. Now with a model like this, um, starting from a, a, a primitive, uh, we would normally start with a cube um, and start the, the uh, chest area if we were doing um, point by point modeling, I'll just switch to another image. So this would be uh, a side view and a front view of the same sort of model. Um, what we would do is put this into the background and then model to this reference. Now having this reference is handy, um, but with the type of modeling we're doing, we'll be using this as a guide rather than an exact uh, copy. We would we could by point by point modeling which we'll show in a later video we would literally model over the top of this plan from the side and from the front um, and do as we are going to with box modeling model one half but it would be over the top of this so as I say this is just a, an idea of uh, the type of reference we could use so we'll open up the basic silo interface and we'll create the um, custom primitive that we're going to use, or the primitive that we're going to use, which is a basic cube. Um, the way I do this is not the only way to do it. There's, there's many, many ways to model, um, to box model. Uh, it's just a preferred method, and I'm quite relaxed in the way that I um, approach something like this. So it's it's not, I don't use snap, which would snap everything to, um, to the specific vertice uh, or axis. What I generally do is, as, as I'll show you now, uh, move the cube over to the side I'm using keyboard D to select face mode I'm going to delete out that face go back to keyboard F which selects the whole object and I want to move the axis, axis to the center here so at the moment you can see the axis is in the middle of the cube and because we're doing this for um, to be able to mirror across this axis I want to move this axis to this center here so I'll go back to keyboard A, which is point mode or vertice mode, vertex mode, and I'm going to go to selection, set object access, back to object mode, keyboard F, and you can see the pivot point or the axis is now on the edge there. So if we now go to modify mirroring and we use just instance mirror, you'll see that we get an instance mirror copy on this side. Now back to vertex mode, keyboard A. I'm going to see anything that I do on this side is mirrored on this side. Can't affect this side, but you can see what happens on that side. So it's a virtual mirror, um, really. And it means that all we have to do is model this, which will be the right hand side of the creature as we look at it. So that covers off the mirroring. So if we want to just go to keyboard F, which is object mode, and use a manipulator to move this up. If we try to think of this as being the creature's chest, um, and we'll raise it off the ground for now, that sort of height. Most of this box model is going to be done in um, the perspective view. And the first thing that I tend to do is to refine the basic uh, shape of the creature. So before I even refine this, the silhouette, I, I want to, to give it um, a head, two arms, two legs. Um, and the rough outline of a, of, a, of a humanoid creature. And I'm going to use um, extrude for nearly all of this. 
So I'm going to start off by going keyboard, select the face mode, and then keyboard Z to do a first extrude. And if you, when you're in um, local move, like so, if you just drag left and right, you'll see that you can go up or down. And it's giving you the local position there. The other way to do it at this stage is to hit keyboard W, and that would give you the manipulator back, and you can then move it up and down, like so. Now, I'm actually moving all around and looking at the position of the extrude, and the way I'm doing that is by holding down keyboard Alt, and I'm using my left mouse button and just clicking anywhere, so away from the object or on the object, and just moving the mouse around and that gives me the ability to look around my object. I can also zoom in and out with right mouse click or I can just pan along left and right with the middle mouse button. So that's the full range of motion to be able to see all around the, the model that we're doing. All of that was explained in the, uh, the basic videos but just to cover it off in case you haven't seen those. So I'm going to do a couple more extrudes like so. So you can see now that that would be a basic torso shape. No refinement to it at all, no rounded, just literally a chunk of polygons to, to start the ball rolling really. Now what I could do is extrude down a leg from here um, which would mirror across there but I don't want it to be exactly in the middle so what I'm going to do is run, go to keyboard S to edge mode So select the one edge there and then shift and X run a split all the way around those edges that are in that row as you can see it goes all the way down the back all the way up to the front and that's given me now um, a polygon here that which will be used to extrude the leg and a polygon bet between the center now I'm just going to switch to vertex mode and holding down control I can tweak these each vert vertex along each point along and I'm just going to refine that shape slightly so if you look at the bottom one you'll be able to see that I'm just literally rounding that torso off slightly go around the back and do the same nothing major just gives us a little bit of uh, roundness to the body So I'll now use this portion and I'll extrude off what will become the thigh. So keyboard D, face mode. And we're extruding again. And now I'm just going to move that polygon without doing any more work, just literally move the polygon to where I would want that thigh sitting. Bear in mind I can see my reference off screen, so I'm thinking of the position of his thighs coming forward, legs coming back down here into the ankles and then onto the, the hoof area. So I'll do keyboard Z and do another extrude, another keyboard Z and another extrude, but I'm then going to go to move mode, and move it like so. Back to this bottom polygon again. Keyboard Z, bring it down. And what I'm actually going to do there is rotate that bottom polygon, like so. So keyboard R gives me that rotate. Back to the polygon again. We've actually gone below the ground plane there, but it's not a problem. Because um, we're going to move it up in a second. Keyboard Z, and this would become the area that will be the, the hoof. Okay, just to move it up through that ground plane is quite simple. Just select the whole object, keyboard F, and then move with the manipulator things up there. So no more refinement on that, just simply the fact that we've got um, two legs sorted. Um, move on to that polygon at the side. And now, quite obviously, we're going to do what will become the arms. So I'm going to rotate that shoulder 
slightly forward like so and then by using exactly the same extrude command just bring a few polygons out like so just gives us two arms again no refinement I'm just going to move on to what will become the head and I'm going to drop that polygon down slightly because unlike a, a very standard humanoid head this um, minotaur comes out forwards like so out here rather than up through a neck like so so I'm going to move that polygon forward and rotate it keyboard R rotate using the manipulator and move and then same again extrude rotate like so and then one more and just shrink that down a little bit keep keyboard E and just bring it down a little bit and all that's given me is um, a neck coming forward and again no real shape other than the fact that it is humanoid two arms two legs and what will become a head so I'm going to save at this stage and we'll move on to uh, refining the form or refining the silhouette with pretty much not many more polygons than we've got there